Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel. Over the last couple days, there's been no shortage of people panic selling their XRP. So let me just tell you this right here at the outset of this latest Moon Lambeau hot jam. I will not be selling my XRP. And why? Because I refuse to miss the XRP bull run when it happens. I outright refuse. And also, folks, things ain't so bad as uh, some of y'all out there are making them out to be. I get it, you get hit in the feel feels when your net worth goes down, when something that you're investing in uh, decreases relative to the uh, United States dollar or, uh, you know, pick the fiat currency of your particular pleasure, Wh whatever it is. I, I understand all that. But XRP has been a top performer in, uh, in crypto when you're talking about large cap coins and against traditional finance. I'm going to show you some actual real numbers. I just, I, I... I just, I'll say this, I understand that humans, when, when price is going down, they feel that it's bad. And they feel that this shouldn't be happening. Something is wrong. Well, then point to me what is wrong, because the only thing I see is humans continuing to act like silly-ass retail investor lemmings act. Which is, by the way, them continuing to behave like that is part of my investment strategy. Let them panic sell, and then let me just be cool as a cucumber, bro. And just not do anything. After I buy stuff, you know what I do? I do precisely nothing. So I'm going to share with you some actual numbers here and add a little bit of perspective. But my gosh, I just, I can't, I just, <laughs> the short-term outlook from some people. It's just, I might even have the tweet pulled up here. I don't know if I have it in, in this, if I pulled up for this video. But it just popped in my head. So I'll just mention it regardless because I want to make sure I mention this. But I, I was tweeting to somebody and I just, I, I just pointed something out. I was like, look, I've been holding XRP for almost six years so excuse me if i don't have sympathy for people who've been holding xrp for all of three weeks who are panicking forgive me if i because i've been through every freaking up and down along the way and i control my emotions but look but before going any further i do want to be clear i do not have a financial background of any kind i am not offering financial advice and you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything i say or write i'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making youtube videos about crypto related topics but just as a hobby and just for fun now look i don't make price predictions i don't know what's going to happen when it comes to the price action of xrp and maybe despite what i think is most probable maybe xrp goes to zero but I don't see how that makes sense. I still think that, and I, I believe this when I jumped into crypto in 2017 because you know the entire asset class in a general sense uh, moves in tandem. And perhaps you're seeing to some degree a bit less of that as time passes. But still, broadly speaking, the asset class very clearly moves in tandem. And so I, I just, I still believe that my initial investment thesis is the one that makes the most sense, which is quite simply that utility matters and will win the day. So seeing XRP increase in utility, seeing it be the only large cap cryptocurrency in the United States that is legal clarity uh, and, and just the developer activity increase. And I just I don't care what happens in the short term. And so I want to build on some of the stuff that I said yesterday. By the way, at the time I'm recording these extra pieces at 63 cents, um, when I published uh, my last video talking about price about 24 hours ago, it was somewhere as low as in the neighborhood of 61 cents, somewhere, somewhere thereabout. So you can see even here from when I'm recording, a uh, 24-hour low of 61 and a half cents. Now, we are up a bit since that bottom, uh, up over 3%. Uh, Bitcoin, here's the 24-hour Bitcoin chart here. I'll just flip back and forth between the two. They look pretty samey, don't they? Look pretty similar directionally. Bitcoin's not up as much, but yesterday uh, XRP was down more than Bitcoin was. So it's not that the percentages are always going to be the same, but directionally, it's so frequent that you see this. I pointed this out yesterday, flipping back and forth between charts. Who cares? And that's why I say who cares about the short-term price action? And yes, people aren't feeling so hot. This is not about XRP. Do you remember when crypto markets were in greed? Do you remember that? In recent months or tons of days were we in greed? For a lot of this year. Maybe most of this year. I'd have to go back and check. But look at this. We're now down to 49 out of 100, which is neutral. That's not. This is not an XRP fear and greed index. This is a crypto fear and greed index. This is not about XRP. XRP is moving in tandem, in tandem with broader crypto markets. And so uh, a little bit after recording that video I just cited a moment ago, I tweeted out the following, which is in line with the message that I was conveying at that time. And I want to build on that. But here, here's what I uh, tweeted out. Uh, the, technically, it was this morning. It was in the AM. So some hours after I published that video. But I wrote, I think some people need to chill. XRP continues to move in tandem with the entire crypto market. I've lived through every up and down regarding price every day since I bought XRP on November 17th, 2017. I simply don't see a problem. 
Maybe if Bitcoin had been trending up instead of down for the past month, XRP would have a higher price. Bitcoin leads the market par for the course. And that's it. And I firmly believe that to be the case. I get it. People have trouble with this stuff. I happen to not. So this is not me telling you to buy or sell. It, it, and honestly, even if you're one of the people who sold all or even a portion of your XRP, I don't look down on anybody that does that, just to be clear. I don't care. It's none of my business what you're doing. And if that that's what makes sense for you, for any number of reasons, I don't even care what the reason is, good on you for doing what you believe is best for you. I'm not going to presume that I know better than, than you what is right for you. I don't. I don't know your specific life circumstances. That's why I don't offer financial advice. I'm just speaking in a general sense uh, what I think makes sense for myself while noting that even if a person in their own individual circumstances selling makes sense, I'm still noting that it is my belief that the typical lemming retail speculator out there makes all sorts of silly ass decisions, important financial decisions based on, on their emotions. And so take a look at some actual data. If it's on your screen right now. I'm going to read it to you. So um, this is at uh, 5.03 a.m. in the morning Central Standard Time. I was looking at my, my uh, X feed, formerly known as Twitter, and I'm just thinking to myself, although there's all sorts of people out there, many of you listening, I'm sure, very level-headed about this, many of you not reacting emotionally in some sort of negative way, although even if you are, all that I'm saying is just make sure you have a level head when you make important financial decisions. That's, that's it. So even if you, um, you know, you feel some scary, scary emotions and then you think about it level headedly and you're like, the right thing for me to do is sell some or all of my XRP. OK, I, I have no qualms with that. I'm just saying don't make the important decision based on what other people are doing. If something's going down short term price action, uh, you know, just to, to follow the leader stuff because you're afraid. That's the stuff where I, I just think it's like a terrible idea. And so I tweeted out the following scene that there were still were a lot of people freaking out about the price of XRP and really pissed off that we aren't, we're not at a new all-time high after the, uh, the, the positive ruling from Judge Torres. And so I tweeted out the following. Can we keep some perspective, please? Year-to-date increases are as follows. And this is, <laughs> this is in, in order of uh, descending uh, profits for the year, year-to-date. So it's all year-to-date. Um, starting with, uh, I just picked six, with a, an XRP happens to be at the top. And it's not like I'm cherry picking here. I'm not exactly, I, I picked the top three cryptos and then the three major indices that people track in traditional finance. So that would be the NASDAQ 100, S&P 500, and the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So I'm not really cherry picking here, but XRP's at the top, so can we quit our bitching? So here we go, <laughs> XRP, year to date, plus 85%. Bitcoin, plus 74%, ETH, plus 52%, NASDAQ, plus 40%, S&P 500, plus 17%, Dow Jones, plus 5%. Folks, we got a good, okay? <laughs> and I'll tell you what, um, I hazard a guess that at this particular juncture in time, had we not gotten that legal clarity, I don't think XRP would sit in, be, be sitting on top of that list. It would probably be close to ETH, maybe below it. Uh, maybe even NASDAQ would be higher. That's possible because NASDAQ's at uh, 40%. Um, but come on, guys. <laughs> Can we just keep some freaking perspective here? And don't forget, XRP's never gone on a run where it hits a new all-time high without Bitcoin going on an absolute tear first. We didn't have that. So none of this, none of this, like... Just, I'm just asking you to keep some perspective. Do whatever you want to do. I don't care if you buy or sell. I don't know what's best for you. I don't know what's going to happen with the price of XRP. I'm, I'm, I'm flatly stating <laughs> I'm not pretending to be some fake internet guru. I'm unprofessional. I'm a dude on the internet who runs a YouTube channel with a silly ass name, Moon Lambo, and who may or may not be wearing pants. You do not know my current pants situation. You wouldn't want to be taking advice from a guy on the internet named Moon Lambo, not even knowing his pants situation. Just, just so I'm just saying. But, um... I, I just, and I'll tell you this, I haven't said this in a long time, but it, I'm not, I, I joke about being an XRP bot, like beep, boop, beep, look at me, no emotions. And I don't feel the negative emotions. I don't feel those anymore. Um, I do feel some of the excitement, which I think is deserved when things go to the upside. I, I, that's fine. But uh, when I jumped into crypto, um, especially as I was learning, as I was getting used to the most volatile market, which is broadly speaking, the crypto market in the entire world, as I was still getting used to that, uh, in, in 2017, but particularly in 2018, as we were in bear market territory, 
Uh, there are there are no shortage of instances, especially in the first half of the year, that I found to be rather terrifying. Now, good on me for despite the fact that I felt those emotions, um, I didn't panic sell. I, I didn't do any of that. Um, I've never cashed out any of my crypto into uh, United States dollars, even after all this time. Uh, my net worth is a lot higher because I've been in crypto for all this time, but I haven't cashed out in USD and I've never sold a single XRP in my life. But, uh, you know, I started dollar cost averaging back in XRP after its all-time high near four bucks. I started dollar cost averaging in when it got down to 55 cents and 50 cents, 45 cents, and it just kept going down and I kept buying. And I remember by the time it got down to about 25 cents, which if memory serves would have been the middle or later part of August 2018, it, I just, this terrifying feel hit me. And I was just thinking about how much I had put in and how much it, it, it was, uh, how much I had lost relative, it's, it's, you know, relative to the United States dollars considering what I'd put in. And it just hit me. And then I was like, but I had already experienced similar moments. To that. But this, this is the one that stands out because it's the, and I swear on my life, this is the last time that I ever felt that emotion of, of being scared investing in crypto. Because um, the reason I had made it that far without panic selling is because when I would feel those emotions, I'd let, I just use logic, reason, and data. I'd look at logic, I'd, and then I'd come to the conclusion, uh, I mean, it's just an observation. It's just undeniably true that it's the typical retail speculator who observes these feelings within themselves and then, then panic sells. And so I was already aware of that up to that point, but I just, for some reason, it sunk into such a level at that point. I just, I never felt terrified of negative price action ever again. I just, I just didn't. I, I said to <laughs> said myself, I, did, I already knew these things to be true, but I guess I just needed to let it sink in and live through it for it to really hit. And I just had more recognition that, this is the most volatile asset, volatile asset class on the entire planet. And I know that because even at that point, we had what? You know, over eight years worth of chart history showing that and showing that despite massive bull runs, there were substantial pullbacks for many coins over 90%, Bitcoin crashing over 80%, all that stuff. So I knew that that was a characteristic of the market that I was in. So the fact that the market was continuing to behave like I should expect it to behave based on data, why would that scare me? That I just I just let all of this sink in and it did take a little bit of time, but I got to that point and I was like, yeah, I know this is what it does. And then I just go back to my investment thesis and it's like, Matt, do you believe your investment thesis that utility matters and will win the day? Yes, you do. So I was like, you know, quit being a little bitch ass. You know, like, that's, pretty, that's pretty much it. Just have a little, little pep talk with myself, you know, quit being a little punk ass bitch. You know? So, so that, but that did get me through it. I, I did need the experience to, to, um, you know, to be able to shake that off. Uh, and now it's nothing. I mean, I ultimately saw XRP uh, go down to, uh, you know, whatever it was, 10 or 11 cents. That would have been like March of 2020. Um, that didn't bother me either. I was able to purchase it as low as 15 cents. That's the lowest I've ever bought XRP. So I bought it all over the place, all sorts of different price levels. But this is this is not none of this is disturbing. Like you should you should come to expect this of crypto markets. You should expect Bitcoin to lead the charge. It would be weird if the volatile, volatility stopped because volatility is the purpose of investing. If that stopped, what the hell are we even doing here? I'm here because it's the most volatile asset class and it's trending upwards. So yeah, we don't like it when it's to the downside, but we love it when it goes to the upside. And we know that dating back to the inception of Bitcoin, it's been trending upwards. Yeah, I want to break me off a piece of that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so anyway, those were the figures from top assets, the top three uh, crypto assets. And I say top three, I understand that technically there's, uh, was BNB up there, uh, BNB, I think it is. Yeah, BNB and then USDT. But that, it's a freaking exchange coin and, a, and, a, and nothing against Binance. It's an exchange coin and it's a, you know, it's a stable coin. So you've got XRP, and these, this is what I, these are what I consider to be the top crypto assets. XRP, ETH, and Bitcoin. And I think that's fair. So right up there, there's XRP at the top, and then you've got NASDAQ, S&P 500, Dow Jones. Uh, yeah, my net worth is a lot higher than January 1st, and I'm pretty thrilled that I had my money where I had it. Yes. Attorney John Deaton retweeted that for me, and he shared his perspective. He said, it's all about expectations. Unless we are in a full-blown, I'm sorry, a full bull market led by Bitcoin, I never believed XRP would hit an all-time high, even after a good ruling. And I said that when I when asked about my expectations on price, although I did expect it to break one, uh, one to two dollars, to be honest. 
But until Bitcoin breaks its all-time high, I don't expect anything else to. But with all the naysayers out there, know this. You can't argue with facts. Spot on, Attorney John Deaton. And that's my point. That's a big part of my point anyway. XRP is king. <laughs> In 2023, at least to this point, things can happen. Uh, but XRP is king. And if Bitcoin takes off and has a greater uh, year-to-date percentage increase than XRP, good. Because I want Bitcoin to do the Bitcoin thing where it just goes... Whoosh, and then everything else ultimately follows. I would love that. I would absolutely love that. Um, and then there was this from uh, my fellow XRP YouTuber, Alex Cobb. He wrote, who is actually selling XRP right now? After all this legal clarity from a three-year battle, first altcoin to get regulatory clarity in the US and people still selling? And then he's got a little cry emoji and laughy emoji. Uh, Right. So in my opinion, I think that's, that's the type of what, what drives this. It's it's it is the fear. I'm just not participating. It's the people with the short term mindsets. But I, I, I want my number no, 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 now. I want my number now. It's not happening now. I want my number now. And Shut up, little baby. You are an adult child. <laughs> you know, not, not Alex Cobb. I'm just saying people. Obviously, not Alex Cobb. But people, you know, if that's if that's how their brains are working. My God. Stop it. <laughs> so I responded to him and I just wrote, it's certainly not me to each their own, of course. But if I sold my XRP here, I'd have trouble sleeping at night. And by the way, I very fervently mean that. I would absolutely, if I couldn't, if it were illegal for me to ever hold XRP ever again and I couldn't do it, I would have trouble sleeping at night. I feel much better sleeping at night having a <laughs> XRP, the very, very, very volatile asset with lots of uncertainty. Yes, I sleep better with that. Attorney Bill Morgan retweeted that for me and he said, so, and I love this perspective coming from an attorney. This is spot on. He said, so significant was the Torah's decision that the whole market moved up that day, including Bitcoin, yet the effect of the decision was that XRP alone has legal clarity. If people want to sell their non-security XRP in those circumstances and take profits, that is their choice, not my choice. Not my choice either, Attorney Morgan. <laughs> Point well taken. And then there's this from an XRP community member, Yasin Mubarak. And um, he, he tweeted this out uh, this afternoon. And I appreciate this. Um, it shows wisdom. It shows perspective. And I just, I love the honesty of this because you always know if you share something like what, what's on your screen right now, which I'm going to read in a sec, you always know that there are some out there who, since it's the internet, are going to be little troll punks. You know what I'm saying? Not always fun, but um, so I don't know if there are many of that. I don't know if you had to put up with much of it or any of that. There's always that risk, though. I just appreciate the honesty here because he's sharing just perspective and you know, something that he believes to be true, something he learned. And uh, so check this out because he's been in crypto apparently a pretty darn long time and got ETH at a price level where it might as well have been free. You might as well round down to zero. So check this out. He wrote... The experience of buying ETH around $5 and then selling it all at $20 taught me the true meaning of conviction-based hodling. Back then, I didn't have conviction in ETH and wasn't sure how ETH would work out. So I deserve losing on the massive opportunity. Know what you hold, hashtag XRP. Yeah, and anybody purchasing stuff on a whim if they don't know why they're doing it or what the hell they just purchased... I can see why people might flip out when short-term price action occurs, but why are you doing that in the first place? I got to ask. I'd be true. I'd love to pick some people's brains. <laughs> you know? I mean, if it's anything other than like, hey, I'm, I'm putting a tiny amount of money in because uh, I'm jumping into crypto and I want to make sure that I get the experience of what it's like operating on an exchange because that's part of the learning experience. I did that. I could relate to stuff like that. But outside of that, is there anybody that's been here for like half a decade and then they, they just buy something they literally know nothing about. And then, as soon as the price goes down, you're like, you're just panic selling. I mean, because look, I could even understand if, you're, if you have a strategy where you're just like, I want broad exposure on large, mid, and small cap coins. Maybe you have some sort of rationale. But if you're doing that and not researching, but then the next part, which is panic sell over short-term price action, what did you think would happen? <laughs> Do you think that the most volatile crypto asset class is going to stop being volatile and stop moving to the downside just because you put your money in? What the hell kind of baby land stuff is this? Come on. <laughs> so anyway, that's why I said at the outset of the video, no, I'm not selling my XRP 
because I refuse to miss out on the bull run. And if I'm wrong and XRP goes to zero, then I guess I'm riding the bitch to zero. So be it. I just don't think that's the most probable outcome. And I'm going to find out however long it takes because I'm not impatient. And I understand that uh, this volatility doesn't do what I would like it to do on my timeline, if ever. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the Moon Lambo.